Given a constant temperature, which of the following reactions is most likely to be thermodynamically favorable? First, let's address this term thermodynamically favorable. It's a very precise term that the AP test likes to use, but chances are your teacher and your textbook don't use it. Chances are they say spontaneous instead. Both of these terms describe a process that has a negative delta G. And similarly, thermodynamically unfavorable means non-spontaneous, a process with a positive delta G. Now, regardless of which term you use to describe it, we're looking for a reaction that has a negative delta G that will proceed without continual input of energy. So, to figure out the thermodynamic favorability of a reaction, we need to look at changes in both enthalpy and entropy. If a reaction is both exothermic and increases entropy, it's guaranteed to be thermodynamically favorable. And if a reaction is both endothermic and decreases entropy, it's guaranteed to be thermodynamically unfavorable. Now, any combination in between here requires that you consider the temperature. But since we're not given any specific information about temperature, aside from the statement that these reactions all occur at a constant temperature, we're probably not going to have to worry about an in-between situation, and we can just focus on these two situations. So we'll begin by looking at delta H. That's the enthalpy. Just remember that a negative delta H indicates an exothermic reaction, and a positive delta H indicates an endothermic reaction. That's because we're looking at the change in enthalpy, and exothermic reactions release or lose heat, so that change is negative. This is important to remember. It's commonly on the AP exam, and even advanced students sometimes make that mistake. So, right off the bat, we are going to be looking for exothermic reactions with a negative delta H. You can see that choices C and D are both exothermic because they have these negative delta H values. But choices A and B are endothermic with a positive delta H, so we can just go ahead and cross those off right away. It's not that endothermic reactions can't be spontaneous, though. Remember this. But we're looking for a candidate here that meets both of these conditions up for our example. Now, we need to look at entropy, the measure of disorder. There are two things to keep in mind about entropy questions. The first is that entropy increases when you move from solid to liquid to gas because the particles become more disordered with these phase changes. The second thing to keep in mind is that entropy increases when you produce more moles of a gas because gas is most disordered. So these are the two trends that you're going to be looking at for evaluating the entropy change of a reaction. Okay, in choice C, an aqueous reactant and a solid reactant produce two moles of gas. There was no gas before. That's definitely an increase in entropy. That's good, and C is probably the correct answer. But let's check choice D just in case. Here we see that 2 plus 1, that's 3 moles of gas, produce 2 moles of gas. That's a decrease in uh, the number of moles of gas, and thus a decrease in entropy. So it is not going to be thermodynamically favorable in this context. So we can cross off D, and the correct answer is choice C. It's the only one that meets both of these conditions. It's exothermic, negative delta H, and increases entropy, positive delta S.